make some meow meow patches. <laughs> meow meow, meow time. <laughs> it's meow meow time. It's meow, patch, it's meow, patch meow patch time. Meow. Meow. I know it's a little early, guys. That's why I'm just playing meow meow time with the kitty. Because <gasps> Oop, I have to mute that. Oops, I forgot to mute the stuff. Anyway, I'm on a little bit early. Hello, everybody. I'm Tiffany. Welcome to my quilting life. Today's Sunday. So Sunday. I am so tired today, but I'm still going to sew. <laughs> um, Maybe Thumper will help. You're going to help me sew? You're going to help? Hmm? You're going to help? Like, no. You want a tiny little four bridge? <laughs> tiny little four bridge? What's it smell like? Smell like fabric? Sniff it away. Okay. You want to mess them up? Mess them up? <laughs> All righty. Today, I have just little tiny four patches, which you see right here on the screen, these little guys right here. That's all I'm doing. I'm sewing these, and hopefully I'll get enough sewn that I can lay them out into something with my, hold on, here we have it, 328 half square triangles that I trimmed down to be one and a half inches. So that's why I'm making little four patches that are one and a half inches when they are unfinished. That's what I'm doing because I'm making something uh, come to a conclusion that I needed half square triangles and four patches for my project. Yes, I hear him sneezing. What is the fabric making you sneeze? Huh? <laughs> Anyways, let's see who's here. We got Anne, Ronnie, Vicki, Sharon, Carol, Lisa, Tony, um, Judy, Susan, Shauna, Candy, Teresa, Kathy D, Teresa Louise, Tracy, Linda Dollar, Carrie, uh, Donna, Paula, Barbara, Pam, uh, where are we at? Diane, Geraldine, Judy, Zandra, Rena, Lori, Tamala, Linda, and I'm just scrolling fast now. Janice, Billy, Joe, Judy, Marie, all of you, all of you. And if I missed your name, hello and welcome, welcome. Um, the first thing I'm going to do today is open mail. I got a piece of mail and it's just been sitting in the garage waiting for me to open it. But I already know what it is. Oh, okay, good. that's not the information side. Information side is in front of me. It is not this specific item that you see on the cover. Let's see I if like I can't. I like my jacket too, but I will get hot in it very shortly and then need to change. It's taped to it. Ah. There you go, Thumper. Have some paper. Um, it is not what you see here. It is something different. But it's the same concept of what's in the box. Because <laughs> I already know this mail. But I figured I'd open it right here. Well, everybody's here. It is the... This one stays hot longer. So that's what the note says. <laughs> this is the Panasonic iron, but the rose gold version that has the ceramic plate that stays hotter longer. So today, during live stream, we shall use this iron because I knew what it was in the package already. So that's what I will be using today is this one, and we're going to test out the difference between the other one and this one because I've been using the other Panasonic iron for quite a few years now, and it does not stay hot very long. But this one shall stay hot longer. It's advanced ceramic, it says. So this is what I will be pressing my little four patches with today. It 
it's used, but it's an iron, and I knew that it would go good because now this one can actually go with the long arm because it stays hotter longer so that I can iron on the long arm since I do that quite often to get wrinkles out while I'm quilting. Uh, the other Panasonic one doesn't stay hot long enough. So as soon as I like come like one square worth, then that one's already needs to be put on the charger again. So this one shall stay longer, hopefully hotter longer. They want to know if you like the iron. Yes, I love it. And you know who you are that sent it to me. Obviously, it's going to get put to good use. Well, here, do I need to blow it up? Yep. And Scotty can put water in it for me since I use water in my irons. I'm not against putting water in the irons. Some people don't put water in the irons, but I definitely do. So this is what I'm making today. I like this one better than the other one. Let me just... Yeah. This. Uh. Is it leak? You're probably not covering the hole. No, it's leaking, leaking. Leaking, leaking. Yeah, no oh. water in this one. Yeah, right there. Leaking, oh, leaking. yeah. No okay. Water that one gets no water. It's leaking. All right. This is what I'm making, guys. It's very hard to hold these little guys up, but it's a little tiny itty bitty four patch that finishes it. Well, the size of the square is one and a half inches. When it finishes, it'll be one inch. Oh, I'll have to glue it. It's a little wet over here, so beware. <laughs> okay. That's fine. Beware. Floor's a little damp. <laughs> All right. So that's what I'm going to do, is sew these four patches together. And I was hoping to have enough fabric to make. A, from This is all from the leftovers from that star dust quilt so i was hoping to have enough to make the same amount of four patches as half square triangles but it doesn't look like it but then it might be i'm not 100 percent sure at this moment if it will be so we'll see we'll see the more i sew them together welcome everybody that's joining is my thingamabobber working yeah okay all right so here we go. I'm just mixing them up, scrapping them up. So I'm just taking two different ones, putting them right sides together, and with a careful quarter inch seam, sewing them together. And that's all I'm doing today, my friends, because I want to make my little tiny project with these because I have an idea in mind and I want to be able to hopefully get to it today, at least laying out one block's worth the these squares are one inch so if you put four one inch squares together you will have one one and a half inch four patch when you're done so that needs to equal with my one and a half inch half square triangle i did trim them all remember that last week when i was sewing these they were one and three quarter inch some of them were one and three quarter some of them were bigger, some of them were smaller, almost one and a half. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna trim all of them down to one and a half. That way when I make the four patches from these, I had an equal number to work with. So equal number as a number number, not the number of, but I needed an equal measurement. That's the word. Cool Would I make a cool border? What do you mean? For the quilt that's already made? Uh, probably with these little tiny pieces, yeah. But that's, I'm making a tiny quilt with all these tiny pieces. So it'll just be whatever it ends up being. I don't know how big it's going to be because, you know, it's just going to be a tiny quilt. Maybe it'll be a quilt show quilt because tiny quilts are really awesome. I love seeing the tiny quilts at the quilt shows. Yeah. No, the stars in the other room I put in. The last quilt show. They get lots of attention at the quilt show because they're tiny. Nope, not a Jacob's ladder. I've already done a Jacob's ladder with um, 
Uh, it's not in the position you'd think, but let me show you. I've already done a tiny Jacob's Ladder. Camera is going to be spun around, so close your eyes if you get dizzy. <laughs> There's my Jacob's Ladder right there. And that's made from all one inch, so their little finished pieces are half an inch. Same concept, though, but that's how I laid mine out. It was like that. So I've already made one, so I don't need to make another. Yeah, I've made tons of tiny quilts. I love my tiny quilts. I don't just love them. I'm obsessed with them. And I, that's why another reason why I like the leftovers from all of my big quilt projects. Because I like to make little projects afterwards. And I never make the pattern from the bigger project as a little project. I always make something different. But if you aren't scared of these little dinky pieces, I would say save your cutoffs because you can make tons of tiny quilts with the so leftovers. Uh, no, it will be different. I will show you when I make enough of these little four patches to lay the first block out. Because I'll be laying it out. Thumper is so happy with you these. Share, you well, you'll have to turn it so that they could see. Because, yeah, sure. He's playing with the wrap, the wrap that was around the iron box. Yeah, he's in the in the wrapper. Look at him, guys. <laughs> he's like. Ooh, fun. <laughs> oh, what a silly kitty. He actually got up for today's live stream. He was sleeping, and when Scott was counting down the time that I had left to get on live stream, the cat come running in here because he was ready to be on camera. <laughs> He's so silly. Ah, oh, that's funny. Him. It's like, oh, look, fun. <laughs> yep. He's a goofball. He's a goofball thumper. Yep. And it's only the stuff that's on the floor, Candy. So he has to check everything out, but it's only the stuff that's on the floor because he's not allowed on my shelves or my desk or anything although i pick him up but he doesn't like to be on it he jumps down because he knows that he's not allowed up here so he's only allowed on the floor and the funny thing is is after the 10th um the carpet color will be different in here it will be a nice beautiful because our carpet we were hoping to have all this done so now we're waiting till the 10th but we were hoping to have everything done this week but nope so the house is still torn up sort of like we haven't put nothing back but it's mostly a mess and uh yeah because we had to put off having the rest of the house done because the carpet don't come till the 10th so the 9th or the 8th we'll move everything out of here but little by little before that i'll start moving more things out of here because this room and the room are probably going to take longer than it takes to empty my bedroom out and then the ninth the termite guy will come and drill and that same day when he's done drilling scott and i will paint in here and get that painting done and then after the carpet is put in then we could start putting the house back together and have a normal house again but almost fully remodeled because it, it's amazing. I keep telling Scott every time I walk through the house, I'm like, this house is amazing. I love it. It's like a whole new house. It really is. And don't worry, guys, you'll see sooner or later. I'll put together a video a before and after so you guys could all see the change that we made in our house, all because of termites. But hey, you know, those little burgers would have costed us more if we would have waited any longer. So it's a good thing we did what we did now. 
hoping this will be enough little four patches to make my first little layout. You got to be patient with these because they're so small, but they stay lined up. When you nest the seams on four patches, most people press them open. I just press to one side because it's just four patches. But if I was making something else, I would press them open because tiny pieces I usually do. But um, once you lock the seams on these, they stay pretty good and they stay lined up and you should have a nice seam in the middle. You should have perfectly matched pieces. That's the one good thing about tiny piecing is it's not hard to line things up. They're really small, so it's easy to line up. Oop, that goes that way. I almost sewed them together the same way. I was outside a few minutes ago. Earlier today, the sky was nice and clear, but it's been windy. And... All of a sudden, I just went outside a little bit ago, and there's dark clouds rolling in like it's going to rain. But I didn't see rain on the forecast, so we're just going to have cold and cloudiness. And Oh, well. Wind. We want wind. To and wind. What we get? We one <laughs> the, no, it was two days in a row of hot air balloons. So some of the hot air balloons were still in town because the balloon fest got... Um, Ruined by wind, so that's why I wasn't able to film that for you guys this year. Usually I go on the, you know, uh, one of the one day that they can fly and all 50 balloons go up, you know. I'm able to go on the roof and, and film it. But this year, they didn't even have that because it was super windy. Well, yesterday and the day before, the balloons flew. So I was able to make two little short videos for you guys of the balloons coming over the house. There wasn't many. Only seven balloons were out that day, yesterday and the day before. So I was able to film those for you guys to see that they just came right over this way. It's always a thing. So the weekends after the balloon festival, there's no wind. It's fine. <laughs> the week, the weekend of it, it's always windy, always windy. I'm mixing, mix and matching all these pieces too, so they're not um, the same color on each of them. So I want it mixed up, I want it nicely mixed. My machine is a Juki TL2010Q. TL2010Q. You can find it at the link that Scott just put into the chat. If you find it on sale, you can get it for like $899, but most of the time it's $999. I think I have a good blend of color going on here. I'm anxious to lay out my first block though. I'm like ready to hope that there's enough here so I could press them all and then lay out my first block. And then continue sewing after the fact. Because <laughs> I'm anxious to see what it's gonna look like as a tiny block. See, now I'm already warm, so I'll have to take my sweater off. And I can see your shirt. It's a soaking my shirt. Oh. Ugh. Whew. See, I get so sweaty so quick. And I'll be cold in about five minutes. <laughs> Isn't that the way it goes? <laughs> funny. It's because I'm moving around in here, that's why. Moving around, making tiny pieces. And I always, always chain piece my tiny stuff because it's so much easier. 
why that's still up here. I was using it to paper piece. How do you like your other new floor? I love the flooring. It feels like wood. It has texture to it. It's actually really cool. Um, I love it. I think it makes the house look very modern rustic, like the blend of rustic and modern combined because the, we painted the walls, you know. I think it looks really good. I think it makes the living room and dining room and hallway look more open. My one daughter says it looks smaller, but so far everyone else says it looks nice and open, that the flooring definitely, the, the color change and having a new kind of flooring um, looks better. Those that have seen it already. How small are your blocks? These will be one and a half inches when I'm done and press them. So they start out one inch. So I made uh, strip units and then I uh, from my leftovers and then trimmed them down into one inch segments. So I started out with one inch strip units, trimmed them down to one inch segments, and now I'm sewing them together to make a one and a half inch unit. All right, I'm going to sew these together. How are you feeling? I'm good today. I'm, I'm really fatigued. I've been very fatigued lately. And I think that's just because of all the stuff we're doing around the house. You know, that just tired me out. Uh, well, that's why I wanted to be done this week. So we yeah. could rest for a week. <laughs> well, however long we want. Yeah. We're done. Now we got to sit here and, and wait. have anticipation. Yeah. I can't wait to have the new fluffy carpet, though. Because it's uh, the carpet we currently have is a one. If you guys know anything about the thickness of carpet, there's a one, a two, and a three. We're getting a two plus the three quarter inch. Is it three quarter inch or half inch? Half inch, half inch um, padding underneath. So it's going to be like that thick and it's going to be super squishy under my feet. I'm going to love it. How do you know what is the throat space on your juki? My juki's throat space is nine inches. Okay, but how do you know? Oh, uh, they list it in the thing, and I could actually take a ruler oh, right no, here. No, I'm the question wrong. Oh, do you know? yeah. See, Sorry. oh, turn it around so I could see the nine. It, from that end to the needle is actually eight and three quarters, so it's not quite nine, but it's bigger than a lot of the littler, which is over there. The, it used to be behind me. It's bigger than really? those. Yeah, it's bigger than the brother machine. So, all right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> does cost a lot more though than those little machines but when it comes to free motion quilting this is a great machine for that i just don't do it on here because i own a long arm so there's no point all right this should be enough for me to lay out a block because like i said i'm anxious to lay out a block so i'm gonna break all these apart press them and lay out a block and my block is actually a whole entire big quilt worth making it into one block so I'm taking a big quilt layout and making blocks out of it. And hopefully I'll get four blocks worth, maybe six, we'll see. But this should be enough variety for one. Which just takes four patches and half square triangles. So that's why I went with four patches instead of cutting out anything else. Notice I'm making myself closer so that I can get all the pieces. This should be enough for now. I'll leave the rest on the machine. All right. Now to press them, which is kind of hard because they are really small. So you have to like hold them open and then hold the iron over them. And they don't stay very flat, but I'm not going to press the seam open. Just going to press them back. And I'm trying to keep them flat too, because they're so small, they, they will bow. They're just dinky. And I don't want them to bow. So I'm carefully pressing them. You could set your seam and roll it back when you do stuff like this, or you could just hold it very carefully and roll it back. And yes, this iron is staying hotter longer. Like 
you made it seem like it's just a brand, like a spray thing. Yep. Just like they were saying earlier. Yep. I do have a spray like, bottle. Are you pressing them open? No, I'm just pressing them to one side. It's the the layout isn't going to matter if it is pressed open or not. The layout that I'm doing with these. So, to one side or the other is where they're going. There's going to be no connecting nesting of any seams, I don't think. Not that I'm aware of at this very second, actually, because I have to open up the picture on the computer to lay it out. Because it's not something I manually know in my brain. Come on. Wow, this is staying hotter a lot longer. Look at that. I haven't had to put it back on yet, and it's still hot. The other one, you only would have been able to do one or two. Yep. This is definitely better. Put your water thing from the other one would fit on there. Yeah, the water thing from the other one would fit on here. Yes, you definitely. Pull that off and sell it. See? Uh, give me a second. Well, it's... No, we'll do that another time. Okay. It's no big deal. It's working without steam. Like I said, I don't know how many half or four patches that I need per layout per block. Ooh, yeah, it's still hot. Don't burn your fingies. I'm not trying to burn my fingies. Although I've been stabbing the crud out of my fingers lately because I've been on this the hand sewing kick. I've been doing a lot of hand sewing, guys. Like a lot of hand sewing. I have six rows of 12 hand sewn together now. And as of last week, I had the one, and I showed you guys on the camera. But now I have six of those sewn together, and then I just need to get the other six, and I can start sewing the rows together. Yeah, we're like the old, old school, old fashioned married couple where they sit in bed and one's either reading or watching TV while the other one's hand sewing and watching TV. Although I've been doing multitasking, hand sewing, watching TV while watching YouTube videos all at the same time. <laughs> ah. All right. So far, that lasted through all of that. Look at that. I like this one better. Probably should have got me a ceramic plate to start with in the first place, but I didn't know that years ago. Yeah. I'm kind of just giving them some finger pressing while the heat plate warms back up. Have you tried to make a nice quilt? It's like a log cabin with pleats. A log cabin with pleats. Never heard of it. Manx. Manx. I'll have to look that up. M-A-N-X. I have a little notepad right here in the drawer that I've been writing things down <laughs> when someone says something so that I can look it up. All right, that should be ready now. Just leave it sit on there. Ooh, they're steaming themselves. What iron is that again? This one's the Panasonic uh, NIWL607. Yeah, I like this one better. For for one hundred percent for sure. Yeah. 
I actually have little finger things I got in my open gate box for working with little stuff like this so that you don't burn yourself with the iron. I have little silicone fingertips because this is so tiny. I never think to pull those out until just now. And now I'm not going to pull them out because I don't remember where I put them. Oops, that almost started the bow. Don't do that. All these up. I did all these today, this morning. I got up and started making the strip units with the scraps because there was like just little two and a half inch strips um, that weren't, you know, they were just the folds at the end of the fabric. That was all that was left. And then um, some longer pieces and I cut those into one inch strips and then all the white that was left over, I cut those into one inch strips too and then just started sewing them together. And chopping them all up. Jason said, "I don't think they made those iron boots, or that they redid them because the old ones had been too long." Yeah. They were standing up. Yep. Well, the other one I have is older. That's all I know. But they still sell it. They still sell it. The whatever that one is. W something blah blah blah. This one definitely stays hot way longer way longer look at that i was able to do all of these did i lose feed nope. oh that screen did all right now i have to move all this out of the way because i don't know how big this block is going to be just gonna move it all up there actually it can all go right here because i'm still going to be sewing just want to lay the block out, but I have to open it up on the computer. So that's going to take a minute. All right. What's the model for the bow tying? This This box? Uh, different one. Oh. This one is model number NI WL607. That's what this one is. All right. I'm going to put this down open this screen find my picture somewhere in here and open it up in big screen oh yeah yeah, yeah. come on how do i make it bigger uh, i don't know how to make it bigger i guess we're gonna just gonna have to bring it close to me so that i could see all right here we go we're going to start with a four patch right here. Then we're going to do uh, this guy facing down. Then a four patch with this facing up. Then a four patch facing in. Then a half square triangle. Facing down, then a four patch facing up corner right there. Can they see right here? Yeah. Okay. Next row starts with a four patch facing, I mean, a half square triangle down. A pitcher, four patch this way, half square triangle up. Oh, that's the same color. We don't want to use the same color over and over. Oops. In this way that way creating a flying geese unit right there you say you could do a jacob's ladder i don't want to do a jacob's ladder because i've already done one i showed it if you rewind the video just a little bit oops i need different colors different colors that, that way and then let's grab one of these purple that will work and that faces down Trying to go off my screen, which is a very small picture. So he's going to be up. That square triangle goes this way. And a four patch goes that way. Then a four patch goes this way. And then a half square triangle. 
the ringtone developer completed this way. the booth at the Arizona Fairgrounds. Oh, here. awesome. Yes. Skullover's getting close, guys. It's getting close. And then mine will be ready for quilting. All right. Now it's another four patch. Half square triangle this way. Four patch this way. Okay, so I will have four patches that meet in the middle, which is fine. What's the smallest scrap pieces you want people to send you? I don't like anything smaller than an inch. But in reality, if you're going to send scraps, no bigger, I mean, no smaller than an inch and a half because I trim everything down. So, because if you send a bunch of little one inch squares and, and they're all frayed by the time they get to me, they're usually not an inch anymore. This one will go that way. And then it starts with a half square triangle facing up. Then this this way. And half square triangle facing oh not red. Let's do green. Do I have one of those? Do I have a purple? No, I don't have one of these yet. Facing this way. aqua one facing that way and then one of these facing this way and a half square triangle facing that way now one more row raise that out like this then a half square triangle up like this four patch and this well, way right? yes skullover will be entered into quilt shows and that and that and a half square triangle of this cool red color which will go that way all right there's my block maybe i should just move all this out of the way so i could sew the block together because <laughs> if i don't sew it together now then i'm going to get all confused and messed up so let me move this back so that i can make sure i'm just gonna flip those apart and i'm going to chain piece this together and hopefully i don't mess it up everything looks good looks good looks good making sure one more time all right top two now everything's an inch and a half, so it should all fit. So I'm just gonna put all of row one together. I'm not gonna flip or turn anything. I'm just putting them right sides together. I'm not trying to move anything. Just gonna line it all up, sew it together. In the chain piecing, I can't take a photo because I'm using my phone. No, that's fine. I have this picture of a reference. It's very small, though. You know, when you download something off the internet and it's like super small image, once it finally reaches your device, that's what I'm doing right now. All right, so now I just keep these together. I'm going to finger press right, left, right, left, right, left while I add the next row. So I'm pretty much pressing towards the half square triangles right now. And then once it's sewn together, I'll press it really good so that you guys can see the awesomeness. And I'm going to make however many of these blocks I can with what I have going on here. Okay, so next, just putting it right sides together. I'm not moving it or adjusting it, and just putting it together. Okay. 
Come on. They're so small, you gotta make sure you have a little bit of a tail in between each block when you chain piece stuff this small. That way you can line up that next piece easier. So I'm gonna do the same thing, finger pressing right, left, right, left. So now it's going towards the four patches at first. Normally I would press all this open, but, okay, wait a second. Right, left, that's right, that's left, that's right. I knew it looked weird. One was. Like I can talk to you. Yep. We all talk to ourselves, don't we? Right. Do all all right, here we go. Now I'm going to have four patches coming together. And I'm going to just flip my seam so that it nests. Same with my half square triangle. Actually, no, I don't have to do it with the half square triangles. They should be good. Just the little four patches, if it needs to be flipped, which it does. Well, this one I can't either. If I need to flip them, I'll flip them. If not, they could just stay. It's so tiny. I'm gonna make it work no matter what I do. Uh, no, I just, the thread that I'm using is white, but it don't matter what color thread. I just use white because my background is white for these. So all of my fabric is white. So I'm using white thread. If it was a different background color, I wouldn't matter because I wouldn't care what color thread I use. But since my background is white, I'm using white. But you can just as well use cream on a white fabric because it really doesn't show much. I wouldn't use black thread though with white background fabric. Come on, right there. Thank you. You got to be really patient with these for sure. Hoping none of this got turned or moved around because I definitely uh, don't want to have to rip these little things. When I'm done, what? When you're done unbinding, would you be able to point to say this fabric I use on so and so so? Um, no. Do you know where each of the fabric comes from? Most of the, sometimes I remember what quilts they come from, but there are a lot of times I don't remember what quilt it came from unless the video is playing in the living room on the TV. Because the living room TV is me. 90% of the time that TV is just playing my videos. For money making TV. Yep. It's the money making TV. It makes us more money than it uses in electricity. <laughs> I just let my videos play on that TV. So that way more people can see them because the, the, the video is being viewed. So it should come up on recommended for other people. Smart is what it is. Smart. Have a tiny stitch yeah, I'm stitching with a 1.8 stitch length only because I was um, I was uh, cutting these apart, you know, and they're so small. If you use a bigger stitch length on such small pieces and then say you make strip units and then you sub cut them, those stitches need to be tighter. So if you're doing stuff like this, 
Tighter stitches is better. Definitely better. Yes, thank you. I am always pushing forward, but then I have my bad days. It happens often. But I still keep quilting because this is my therapy right here. I don't need pain meds. I just need to come and sit in here and enjoy my day. All right, this is going to be so small. <laughs> I'm not going to press the whole thing till after I sew the rows together. You can hear my fingernails trying to grind against this because the pad of the finger is not helping. I need, you really need to fingernail this. So here's my block. Now I just got to sew it together. <laughs> so since I press them right, left, right, left, right, left, blah, 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 they should nest. It's going to be kind of bulky because I didn't press the seams open, but we're going to make it work. So it's very small, but they should line right up really easily. Just have to keep the seams the way I finger press them. And just take your time and nest everything and make sure it's laying flat as you go. Because that's highly important with this tiny stuff. All right. All right, row one and two sewn together. Why not use your wooden press? Uh, I should actually. <laughs> it's right here in front of me. I keep it right in front of me. Specifically for this kind of stuff. See? All right, so I'm going to put these two but over that, that now. Nancy, yeah. On it. Yeah, Nancy's on it. You have a quarter inch seam? Yep, I'm sewing with a quarter inch seam. Okay, come on. Line up right there. I want you to stay nested. Thank you. Don't flip, don't move, don't turn. Just sew. There you go got to talk to it, you know, so that way it listens just right. This is so adorable. Yep, this is web piecing. Yep. So you can see I have three rows sewn together. Now I just need to sew the other three. So I'm just still going until it's big enough to flip the opposite direction. As long as the other ones stay out of the way, which it's, they do because they're web pieced, so they're kind of stuck at a certain distance from each other anyway. Just making sure that my seams don't flip underneath. Everything stays nicely lined up. You can do this method with any size block. Uh, I don't re recommend it with 10 inch squares, the web piecing, like if you were just to make a giant 10 inch square quilt, and I've done it before, but the webs always get stuck on everything around you, so it makes it a little bit harder. But these little tiny blocks or two and a half inch squares or anything like that through my 25 patch block series, you s you'll see that I web piece every single one of those. I'm just carefully making sure everything's staying nicely lined up, and it is because it's small. What are you going to do with this when it's done? When it's done, I don't know at the very moment because I never know what I'm doing with my projects, but it kind of if it turns out good enough, it's probably going to be a sh little show quilt because I like entering my tiny quilts and shows. All right, one more to go. So this is a 36 patch 
instead of like my 25 patches, this is a 36 patch. Six across, but six down. All right. My little tiny, I don't know what to call it block because I saw it online, is ready to be pressed. And it lines up as best as you can line up <laughs> without pressing the seams open because I didn't press anything open. Hey, Mom, Hi, Mom. All right, I can close that picture, close that out, and reopen that back up now. Because now I have one layout, so I can work from this the rest of the time. How did you line the quilt? I post the video as well. I saw a picture on the internet, pretty sure it was Facebook or something, or Pinterest, or I don't even know, whatever. And I said, I could do that, and that's what I did. Well, you watched a lot of YouTube videos. And not in the beginning, because I didn't know quilting was on YouTube at the beginning. It, it was about six months in before I realized it was on YouTube. And then in March this year, March of this year, I'm on YouTube posting sewing-related videos since March. Eight, was it 8th or 18th? 8th. I don't know. March 8th or 18th will be my six years on YouTube, guys, in case that matters. Do, 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 do. I'm going to let it sit on here. That way, all these seams get flat because I didn't press them open, which they still look pretty good for not being pressed open on tiny pieces. Kind of letting it heat it up really good. There we go. And there is my little tiny block, which is actually the layout of a whole entire quilt. This was from a picture of a lap quilt that was just four patches and half square triangles. And I said, wow, I can do that as a tiny block. So there it is, my tiny block. So now I make a couple more of these. I'm hoping to get at least four blocks out of this. And then like whatever's left of the half, because I know there's going to be way more half square triangles. Like I said, there was 328 half square triangles. So I know there's going to be lots of those, so I could just take half square triangles around the perimeter of this and then use the leftover strips as borders. And then I also have two actual um, jelly roll strips left and then some of the other pieces left. Up. No, I'm not going to square it up. This would be the size it needs to be. So now I have this to lay out more. But first, I shall sew more of these. Spring to long arm, uh, -year -old quilt? Yeah, I'm always available to long arm. Not right this very moment, I ain't. But as soon as the house is back in order, I will be. So I will always be available. Let me go a little bit higher today. All right, here we go. I'm going to sew some more of these four patches together now for a bit. <clears throat> And just leave my little block so you guys can see right there. <laughs> Actually, I'll put it right there because that way it's not on the white. So yeah, I'm just going to mix all these up and I'm going to make what I could make with what I have. And if I do need to turn the rest of those strips, I'll just have to cut more fabric because I don't have. I mean, I do have, I guess I could cut some more from the scraps. Maybe. That's what the back looks like. So they're all to one side or the other. Oh. 
Yeah, I'm making some more four patches, so I have more um, colors. More colors. And then we'll put another one together. I need more color. Trying to blend all this up really good. This little stuff, so much fun, so much fun. It feels to me though, like in real life, in real time, real life, it actually feels like these little tiny pieces take longer than any regular size, say six inch block or whatever, when um, working. Speaking of, this is a seven inch block. Yep, seven inch block. For anybody that was curious, I knew I, I was gonna eventually have to say it, so. But yeah, I think tiny piecing takes a little bit longer because there's just a little bit extra of lining things up and stuff than um, regular sized, you know, blocks. But it's worth it in the end because it's so darn adorable. I love it. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty four patches and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen half square triangles and twenty four patches per block. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna have lots of half square triangles left over. How big is the block total? Seven inches. Seven inches. Seven inches unfinished. So it's not exactly all the way tiny because these piece, the half square triangles are one inch now. They started out one and a half, they're one inch now. And then the four patch is the little pieces in the four patches are half an inch right there. My finger can cover them, but the four patch itself is one inch finished in here as well. Yeah, right here. You can hold it up close if you want. hold it up close you guys could take a screenshot of it because the little picture i have if i held it up to the screen you guys wouldn't see it so he's just going to hold that up to the screen tip it a little bit like yeah towards them <coughs> that's the layout it was just a random picture i found on the internet you know when you google the word quilt layout for half square triangles, you get all sorts of stuff. Well, that's what I got from my Google search. Of course to who? Joanne. Of course. You always have time to quilt. Oh yes, I always have time to quilt. Oh yeah, I always have time to quilt. Mainly in my life here that you guys, if you're ever interested, Sundays is always for so Sunday. So I don't really do anything with friends, family or anything because I love my naps. So I have to have my Sunday nap before my live stream. So there's no point in hanging out with anybody. So I usually spend that morning time either sewing or hanging out on Zoom calls or anything that's on a Sunday. 
Mondays, I usually film on Mondays. And if I don't finish filming on Monday, then I film on Tuesday. And then by Wednesday, if my Monday filming isn't finished, by Wednesday I um, edit. But if my Monday filming gets done on Monday, then I edit on Tuesdays. The half square triangle was there an inch and a half. Yeah, that's what I These are an inch and a half. So the four patches are made from four one inch um, squares. The half and the half square triangles are um, one and a half inch. Those are just what you get when you have the cutoffs, though. The leftover pieces from cutting off a, a snowballed corner from jelly roll strips. So when you sew it together, you get a little, once you trim them down, a one and a half, typically about one and three quarter inch, but mine, I needed to trim down to one and a half. That way they were all equal to do these four patches with. All right. How many have I got so far? Yep, week 19 is the last of the papers. That is this week. And then we will start uh, week 20, putting them all together. Woo -woo. There'll be a few weeks of putting them together. I cannot tell you how many at this very moment. Because as I, I've been filming as the house has been like a disaster. So I just like could film here and there. <laughs> so. They're getting filmed, but in different stages. So the last of that will probably be during the time this room needs to be torn up. I'm trying to get what I can filmed in, in advance, though. Because, yeah. How will you quilt this? I have no idea how I will quilt this at this time. I don't really think about the quilting until it's done. Most of the time. How big will the quilt be? I have no idea. Whatever a couple of these seven-inch blocks are. Plus some borders. I don't know those things in advance. Stitch My stitch length is a 1.8. Very small. For small pieces. All right. I'm going to press these and lay out another block. Now that I have a main block to go off of. Put those there. Break these apart. Move that out of the way. I have more colors to choose from. Like I said, I'm hoping to get at least four blocks. If I can get six, that would be better. Or eight. Uh, Scott says, what do you guys all think I should do after Skullover? That's how it works in my world. But I do take suggestions. <laughs> that it? Didn't drop anything. All right, while that iron heats back up, just gonna. Well, the one lady said to bang the quilt. But other than that, no one said anything. I do have to do some client start to finish stuff after Sculliver is done and my room is put back together. But those will probably just be time lapse videos because I've already taught how to do it. So I really don't need to teach again because they're t shirt quilts. So, but between all that, I could still do other things. Oh, it's iron is hot already. Good. Do, 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 do. For you? No, got it. Not on these ones. They're, they're so tiny. Which one? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll go grab it. Yep, I'll get it. Yep. All right. Whew. This is one hot iron. I do got to say, I really like this one better. And I'm probably going to have to put the purple um, thing on here for steam. <laughs> the purple irons. Uh, 
water thing or just glue this one somehow. We do have some clear, because we've been remodeling our house, we do have a clear, what is it called again? Uh, oh. Caulking, yeah. We have all sorts of stuff for the little remodel of our house. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure I can use that to fix the tank on this. Big warning though, just be careful when you're pressing your um, tiny pieces with a hot iron. Just don't burn your fingers because it's definitely. It's definitely easy to burn your fingers this way because they're so small. Should I go throw those over there? The cat is laying in the bag, <laughs> the paper wrapping from the mail. <laughs> He's so weird. Yeah. Small projects I can do in one video, which is the good part. But I'm also this year, due to the responses from all of you out there, um, I am actually going to do a lot more other people's patterns this year as well. So I'm going to try to integrate the from picking the fabric to the whole thing. But I, there is no possible way that I can do a quilt week like, you know, like Jordan Fabrics and, and uh, Missouri Star and stuff, because I don't have anybody but me working here. And that's way too many quilts <laughs> if I made a quilt a week. So I'm just going to work in my little projects and then other people's patterns are going to get integrated into my channel. Where is your purple finger skull? They're somewhere. They were. Aha, they're right here. Just so that you guys know what these are actually for. These are silicone fingers to keep yourself from burning yourself like I've been doing right now. They keep you from burning your fingers when you are using tiny pieces. So they're just little silicone fingers. So that way you can take your piece and you can touch your finger to the iron 500 times. And guess what? It's not hot. <laughs> They're half inch when they're finished in the four patch unit when they're finished. No, the four patch unit itself right now as it sits is one and a half inches. But the little, once they're inside there, the little finished is half inch. Yeah. Come on. The only thing about these fingers is they're hard to pick the pieces up with. It really got to be on my fingers just right. But I have them and they were right there, right where I figured I left them. I got them in my open gates box, so I don't know what brand they are because it doesn't say on them. So I can't tell you guys that, but I just know, just want you to know they do sell silicone fingers for tiny piecing and or applique if you have little tiny applique pieces or something and you need these little fingers because this is definitely a lot better because this iron is hot and you can still see it steaming that's how hot it is but they definitely don't open the pieces very well <laughs> Put a little bit of baby powder on them. Ah, uh, okay. I don't have any baby powder though. Well, maybe we do. I we don't get, know. We got rid of it all. Oh, yeah, we got rid of it all when we got rid of all the baby stuff. We got rid of all the baby stuff. Yeah. Daycare. I do have uh, after shower powder though. Oh, is he? eyes are shut. Yeah, he's sitting there sleeping. Such a weird cat. All cats are weird, but now they say cornstarch will work. Cornstarch yeah, too. Have. That we have, yes. All right, one more. And then I can put together block number two. And even probably block number three. There's enough here. 
All right. There we go. Let's lay out some more blocks. Let's take my thing. Oh, this one's stuck. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Anyways, those are my silicone fingers for pressing my little things. I don't think I'll be needing them to press the whole box, though. So I shall put them back in my little baggie. You need them for your hands, so you don't stab yourself. Actually, I have. No, I don't know where my, um, I had a I know. thimbles. Had I don't know where my thimbles but went. You lose all your stuff. Yeah, I lost all my thimbles, but I have been, my fingers, the whole edges right here and under here on my thumb and my first finger, I've just been stabbing the crud out of myself with my needles for hand sewing. All right, here we go. Got a block here. It helps me lay them out. This way. And this way, and this guy, and I want some dark blue, go that way. And then it goes half square triangle, let's use red first. Oh, nope, that way. Are you going to do another Hunter Star quilt? Um, I can do another Hunter Star quilt. I actually like the Hunter Star. And I love the way I do it. If you guys haven't seen my Hunter Star video, it's an old video, but um, still good. Uh, I like the way I make the Hunter Star. I simplified it with 10 inch squares. And half square triangle, dark purple, go that way. And then four patch this way. Four patch this way, four patch that way, half square triangle this way, half square triangle that way, four patch this way. Yeah, I suggest making a quilt block first, then make the rest from that. And then one there. Here. My hunter stars, yeah. Have you ever done the tulip pink butterfly? No, I haven't, but it's on my list of things to do someday. Just haven't done it yet. But I would love to do it. I'd have to get the pattern, but I'll do that when I'm ready to finally do that. <laughs> That way. Let's go up. Let's go that way. That way. Four patch. That way. Four patch. Uh, that way. There's too many of these in here. Pull that out. Put that in. No, pull this out. Put this in. There we go. And then last row. Nope. Yep. That way. Um, and this way. Let's do a red. Uh, that way. Oh, that's the same as that guy. Let's put him in this way then. And I'll put some baby blue. Another one of these and a four patch. Bam, just like that. Now, check it, check it. Looks good, looks good. Looks good, looks good. Yeah, that's definitely big difference. Okay, looks good, looks good. All right, let's sew it together. So again, I'm not flipping, turning, moving, nothing. I just one right on top of the other from starting with row one and two. And then I just kind of chain piece them through or web piece it through. I'm loving these. They're so cute. 
Oh, no, no, no. Don't get turned on me. No, no, no. No. Okay, hold on. That third one goes this way. And that way. Yep. And yep. Okay. It turned. It's so small, they get moved easily. Can't blame it on fat fingers either, because I have little fingers. Foundation piece for a dinosaur. There might be. Etsy has a lot of different cool patterns. I don't want to make a dinosaur. I'd rather make a dragon. And I know who exactly has a dragon. And it's called Legit Kits. If you guys haven't visited my friends over at Legit Kits, they actually have a dragon. <laughs> After the skull, I was thinking maybe I could do the dragon, but I don't like their colorway for the dragon. I would rather him be a different color. So that is why I am not going to get the dragon. But if I do do it, I will have to tell them I need a different colorway. But they don't, you know, they, they make them all in one. Yeah, it's oranges and reds, and I don't like it. I would rather it be like purples and aquas, because a dragon would look better in purples and aquas with orange flames, orange and red, you know, for the flames instead. All right. Next. Just pick it up, flip it over, and sew it. Pick it up. Flip it over, sew it. And I'm still just pressing one side or the other. No big deal. I could get the pattern without the fabric, yes. Thing is, is I'm not, okay, you guys all say I'm really good at picking colors, but um, that's a lot of color to pick from, and I think I would mess it up. I really do. That's the only thing about paper piecing that I would rather have done for me is I'd rather have the pattern and the fabrics all picked out for me. I'm not very good with the mixing up of that, unless it's like a simple paper piecing project, but those ones like Sculliver, there is no way in absolute hell I would have been able to piece Sculliver if I would have done the pattern only. There's no way. I, I would have been lost. Mm -mm. It wouldn't have looked right. I mean, they give you a color code to go by, but I would have been, yeah, I would have been lost. So I would rather have that kind of stuff done for me. So I'm just doing the same thing where everything is right, left, right, left, right, left with these. I'm going to try to just continue making that same thing throughout this whole little tiny pieced quilt that I'm making. All right, next. Just paying attention, trying not to let anything get moved or turned. Sure, a lot of traffic going up and down the street right now. We live on a cul-de-sac, so it's very weird when there's like a ton of traffic up and down our tiny little street. But it sounds like just people going up and down and turning around or something. Like they're lost. Could very well be. Left. Right. Left. Right. Left and right. Okay, two more rows left to put on here. Yeah, 
Yeah. I love it. I love doing this with my scraps. I love doing it with everything. I look I like making projects from the leftovers. Cause here on Tiffany's Quilting Life, nothing goes to waste. <laughs> I try to use every last bit of everything down to the inch. That's it, inch. <laughs> Anything less, that goes to waste. But in reality, nothing goes to waste. Okay. All right. All right. Is there any questions or anything, Scotty? Oh, okay. Does anybody have any questions? Other than the ones I've been an answering already? Anything else, Anything other than? Um, we are going to, in a minute, when I'm done with this block, we're going to do an auction. Uh, if you guys want me to, we will do an auction. Because we need to make a little bit more money to, to pay for our flooring. <laughs> uh, we don't have to do an auction though if you guys don't want i just have one thing to throw on today if, if you guys are okay with it how many pieces do you need pieces do i need it for what oh 36 six times six is 36 yes 20 of the four patches and 16 of the half square triangles. All right, left, right, left. <sighs> Scott's playing with Thumper. He's being a silly kitty. All right, now they're webbed together. So now to just right sides together and carefully stitch them. Nesting each seam as I go. Each junction that I finger pressed right or left. Those are the seams that I'm nesting. And I'm just finger pressing with my wooden finger to just one side. Again, normally I would have put them, you know, the seams open, but that does take a lot more time and I don't feel like doing it. And I didn't press anything open to this step anyway, so I might as well just keep pressing to one side or the other. No matter what I do, because these are so small, it's going to be bulky no matter what. So... Tiny piecing is very bulky on its own, so. Yeah, they are adorable. Like I said, I don't know how many blocks I'm going to get out of all these, but. I will make as many blocks as I can out of all this. And I still have more four patches to make, so I should be able to get a pretty good size little mini quilt here from all of this. Right there. Oh, now he wants to meow. I have no idea how this will get quilted. My wooden finger press came from www.tquilts.com or you can get her website off of her YouTube page at T Quilts. Yeah. Just click on the link and she has them on her website. This is where you can find them. They're made by uh, a wood artisan that doesn't sell, they don't have their own website. So she buys in bulk from them and then sells them. Are you going to make a big quilt with these? Or are you not going to make a 
Uh, whatever size quilt I get from this is what size it will be. It won't be very big. It's just going to be a wall hanging. No matter what size it turns out, it's always a wall hanging when it comes to the miniature stuff that I do. You yeah, I don't know about sashing. I'm not 100% about that part yet. I just know that this is the block so far. Sometimes I make up my mind further in. Sometimes I change my mind, you know. We're all that mind changing difference of, you know, the next day we'll see it differently and go, oh, hey, I should do this with it, you know. When it's one of these make it up as you go kind of things. Minus the, you know, the block itself. I did find it on an, on an internet picture, but I'm still kind of making up the project as I go. Oh man, that one really got off. My fashion strips are two inches shorter than what I need. Will it look weird if I sew on those few inches to each strip, or is there something better I can If do? they're a few inches shorter, then either cut new pieces or sew on the little pieces and just offset them so that the seam lands somewhere that it's not at an edge. I really want to pick that real quick right here. It didn't line up right, and it to me looks not good. I just need to align one seam because it's off to me. The only thing about this uh, tiny piecing using tiny stitching because these are so small it's hard to get my seam ripper in which is another thing that you'll find at T-Quilts. This is the matching seam ripper that goes with my finger press. You can get those on tquilts.com. I'm only ripping out an inch before and an inch after the section that I needed to rip that didn't line up. If you guys were curious, there's no sense in ripping any further than that unless it was messed up further than that. But I'm only ripping out that amount of section. And I'm just going to readjust it. So I just made a hole. That's all I did. And I'm going to readjust it real quick. And then hopefully it matches up better. I did use batiks, so they are a little bit easier to nest than regular fabrics. Much better. Look at that. See, just fixing that little tiny area. I should have showed you guys, but I didn't think about it till just now when I said I should have showed you guys. <laughs> It was just off by like more than an eighth of an inch. So, and it was gonna bother me if I didn't fix it. Because I guess those two pieces just didn't wanna line up. That's why it's best to just go slow. Although me and slow aren't friends, but still it's best to try your best and go slow. I uh, I had sausage pancake. What is it called? Yeah, sausage pancake for dinner. And they were freezer burnt. <laughs> but I still ate them. It's like a corn dog on a stick, but it's a pancake with sausage in it. And you just dip it in syrup or whatever you want to dip it in or just eat it plain. But yeah, that's what I had for dinner. Bacon yesterday. I had bacon, know? no, not yesterday, the day before I made bacon mac. Remember? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. No, it wasn't yesterday. Bacon was here. Yep, and I had bacon the other day. Almost every other day. Yeah, every other day, yes. Bacon every other day. That's my life. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I'm waiting for this iron to keep back up now because it turned itself off because they do have timers. It's so adorable. I love this thing. I'm glad I went on the internet and found a layout for square triangles. I'm just going to let the iron. Flatten it out as best as possible. 
it was mostly um, finger pressed, so should lay pretty good. As you can see, they don't lay very flat, but it will once it's a quilt, you know. Does bacon bother your MS? No, bacon does not bother my MS. Bacon is like, daily, so I imagine it uh, yeah, bacon is like my uh, only food that doesn't screw with my stomach. Like I can eat, well, uh, chicken doesn't mess with my stomach either. Baked chicken and stuff. Fried chicken does. But baked chicken or things like that are, that don't have a lot of grease um, don't mess with my stomach. But bacon is one of the only meats that does not mess with my stomach. Red meat messes with my stomach. Regular pork chops even mess with my stomach. Um, hamburger. I already said hamburger, huh? Because that's red meat, you know. So if I eat steak or anything like that. I don't eat fish, so obviously, you know, I don't have to worry about that. Yeah, it's one of the meats that I can eat an enormous amount of and not get sick. All right, block number two. Look at that thing, it's so cute. I love it. It's so colorful too, I love the color. So if two of these were together, it just creates this. Here, let me lay them on here, actually. So if these were sewn together, one right after the other, this is what would happen. I love it. It's gonna be so awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it. Do you try Canadian bacon? Yes, I like Canadian bacon on, on uh, pizza. Even though I'm not supposed to eat pizza. Pizza, because the tomato sauce <laughs> screws with my stomach. Like, bad. You do Canadian bacon every time but, you make an egg sandwich. Oh, yeah, I do Canadian bacon every time I have an yeah. egg sandwich. I, yeah, every time I make an egg sandwich. Exactly. Because I do um, ham. I like ham, fried ham sandwiches, which is Canadian bacon. All right, so all I have left to do is piece this pile together, you know, all of them, make sure that I picked them all up. So I'm just going to finish piecing all these little uh, four patches together, and that way I can continue with putting the blocks together after the fact. See, this is why I don't know if I want sashing, because they really look cool next to each other. But if you were to add sashing, let's just pretend for a moment that it had, say, a one and a half inch sashing between it. I don't like that. I don't, I don't like it separated. I actually like it next to each other. And then take the half square triangles as the first border, all the ones that are left over, and like, you know line them all up into like flying geese units all the way around or something. Oh, that would look awesome. Or right here at the tips of these guys where they would land. Oh, that would be so cool. Look at this. There you go. Flying geese units at the tips of every time that there's two four patches. This. All the way around. Oh, that would be so awesome. And then the corners can be this like that oh yeah i'm giving myself ideas as i go that's how it works in my world here i just have fun with it and have fun <laughs> all right yep i think that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna lay all the half square triangles out and and border it with those whatever's left so however many blocks i can get i'm pretty sure because i started with 328 half square triangles uh i'm pretty sure there's going to be enough to go all the way around the perimeter <laughs> and then add a second border oh that'd be so cool all right so i'm just going to go ahead and piece together the rest of these four patches so that way i don't have to 
you know, whatever. That way they're all done. And then they just need to be pressed, which makes it easy for later. I'm gonna go grab the quilt and we'll auction that off real quick. Want to talking about color here's some color of a little quilt that i'm going to auction off today i'm going to start it off at 25. this is called the leftovers this is when i'm speaking of leftovers this is what happens am i spooling oh okay i'm spooling on here um anyways starting it at 25. You guys know how the auction goes. The highest bidder will be the one that gets it. This is called The Leftovers. It is just a little quilt that's 36, 37, 38. It's probably like 39 by... My whole thing froze 23 and 23, yes. Uh, 46. So 39 by 46 is what it is. So, and it has a nice flannel back. I'm trying not to knock any of this down while I go show you guys. It has what a cute, the name of the pattern? this one's called The Leftovers. No, no, no. I, I just oh, I don't know. It was just on a picture. I didn't click on the link that it goes on. I just downloaded the little tiny picture. Well, anyway, you're at 55 at Joanne Snelling. Okay, 55 at Joanne Snelling. I don't know why, but my screen is not working. Is my chat even working? Anyways, this is it sideways. This is just called the leftovers. This is what happens when I make a quilt and I have all the cutoffs. These are from bigger cutoffs. And I just made this with it. We're at 60 for, who's it? Joanne Snelling. Joanne Snelling is at 70. Again, it was uh, 46 by 40. It's 40 by 46, so it's a baby quilt. With a nice, soft, flannel, cute backing. I don't want to touch it to anything because it's going to end up picking everything up. Because it is flannel. I'm going to have little tiny four patches stuck to it. What are we at? 80. Margaret Hassler is at 80. <sighs> just. Oh, and the quilting on it is roses. I should just bring this close to the camera without knocking everything. So the quilting is roses with leaves. So there's roses and leaves. The whole thing is just roses and leaves all over. Roses and leaves. White binding, obviously, and then again, the soft flannel back. We're at 90. Who's at 90? Margaret. Margaret is at 90. Margaret at 90. Try to make this one a quick one. So I can continue with my sewing. It's got a tag. It says Tiffany Groff Quilting Designs, and it says it's called the Leftovers you on it. No, it's fine. So there it is. I haven't seen the numbers move at all. So we're at ninety with Margaret Hassler. Sit down. Calm yourself. Ninety. Margaret Hassler. Yeah. Yeah, that showed it. Creature. The sea creatures on the back with <laughs> the sailing ships and the fishies and the yes, I showed that. Yeah. All right, Margaret Hassler at ninety going once. Margaret Hassler at ninety going twice. Sold to Margaret Hassler for ninety dollars. Don't forget to email me, Margaret after today's video or you can do it now just say in your title of the email which is in the description below my video but i'm pretty sure you've emailed me before so you know how to find my email um, send me an email that says uh one quilt on auction and 
just uh, tell me which way you want to pay, and uh, which is either Zelle or uh, PayPal. And yeah, then we'll go from there. And now we're going to, I have to set it up first. I've got to set it up. Let me Hold set on, it up. You can kill it. We're going to do a giveaway also while we're here. I need to open yeah, before we get on. this. I'm going to set up a giveaway to let it run for this little bag right here that I made. This will load. I don't know what's going on, but everything's slow right now. So I'm going to set this up, guys, and then you guys can enter. I haven't been on this in a while. I should have opened it before the live stream, but I don't ever think about these things right away. to that, I'm going to go to giveaways, we're going to go to custom, and we're going to edit this to run right here, there we go. All right, here we go. There's a giveaway for U.S. residents only. Right now, I cannot ship elsewhere. And if you enter and win living elsewhere, you'll have to pay for your shipping. Because it's I know that free shipping in the US. it's Just free shipping in the U.S. So it should be explanation gift should be the entry thing. Should be working. Is they is it working? So you guys can enter okay, now, now and it should be, yep, there you go, it's working. It's not just moderators this time because I changed it since the last time. <laughs> it, appears <to> <laughs> it appears to be working. It appears to be working. It showed up on the screen. So it's just a little bag that I made. It has black on the lining and it has slip pockets inside of their and it's just a little bag it's got vinyl on the bottom and then this is like a a silk type material it was really hard to work with so it's kind of like what you would see on one of those like, is it a kimono the dress yeah, the, the cup yeah kimono cover the like robe looking thing it's kind of like that fabric that's what you would find on it so that's all it is just a little bag to put i think it is kimono yeah it's just a little bag that I made while I was bored one day. So there that is for one of you to win. And that's going to run for a little bit while I sew my half square tri or my four patches together. I'm telling you guys, I love these tiny pieces. They make quite the statement these little things. Aren't they adorable? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to sew these for a few minutes and then we'll let that giveaway run. While I enjoy my tiny piecing. It's going through. Everybody's able to enter. It's a working today. Yes, it is. Yep. Finally, finally, something works. Oh, the cat stole th Thumper stole Scott's chair. He gets up for a second to help me, and then his chair gets now stolen by the cat me. who's attacking him. That's funny. That's funny. We don't have the white chair anymore. I gave the white chair to the neighbors because when I move my room around, it's not going to have room. Any well, it will have room for another chair. It's just not going to be for that white chair anymore. So I gave it to the neighbors. Um, yeah. 
So when I move the room, I'm hoping that the new setup, once everything's, you know, once the, everything comes back into the room and I set it back up, I'm hoping that the new setup works better for filming and I won't be in this corner no more. <laughs> which is going to be a plus because I, I've never really, I mean, it's okay. It's never bothered me, but you know, I don't like always being in the corner, especially when I'm on camera and I want to run more cameras like the other cameras that I have. It'll be easier to be able to do that. All you guys have to do is type explanation gift, no spaces, just the explanation. Yeah, if you enter from another country, you guys will have to pay your shipping if you win. Just letting you know because um, we've had winners from outside the country before. They've had to pay their shipping. The ones that had free shipping at the time, back when we used to do it for everyone, it was costing us a lot of money to ship it. To New Zealand and Australia and the UK and so on and so forth. So just know that well, out of the country, we yeah, we yeah, for over a year we couldn't even ship to Australia. So all of my Australian fans that did get anything, I couldn't even send them um, even a pattern or something in the mail, you know, because it's they wouldn't accept anything from here. us. Look at this. He is being a silly cat. You only need to enter once and the thing will tell you that you have gotten a ticket. And if it doesn't, just know that the chat bot is working overtime from all the entries. But you only need to enter once. Okay. That's fine. I knew she knows how to get in, in touch with me. <laughs> Everybody knows how to get in touch with me one way or the other. Ooh, this is a lot of four patches. I should have counted how many I was sewing, but if there's 20 per block, however many blocks I make, then that'll give me a, a number on how many four patches I actually made. <laughs> I'm hoping there's enough to get, it looks like there's enough to get at least probably six, hopefully eight blocks. Well, not giant. Giant in the tiny world. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So is mine. Oh. Sorry if I'm spooling on anybody's page. It's very strange for that to happen today. We do have some funky weather blowing in. Yeah. All right. Let's check this thing. Hurry up and get your entries in and I'm going to pull a winner in just a second. All right. Back to the computer. Let's see. All right. I'm going to close entries now. And we're gonna pick a winner to win this lovely bag here. That's just for whatever, you can use it to give it to your grandkids. I don't care what anybody does with it. Once it's yours, it's yours. Pam Lacey, you are the winner of this lovely bag. Pam Lacey, please email me in the description below this video. There is my email or Scott's gonna put in there in the chat, but it's not a clickable link. That's just what my email is. It's not a clickable link, but that's my email. Send me an email that says you won the bag in the title and then give me your address in the actual email, your mailing address. That way I can get it shipped off to you tomorrow or the next day, whatever. It happens usually Monday or Tuesday. So Pam Lacey, congratulations. All right. Well, 
I'm going to go ahead and oh, throw that over there. Get off of here and um, enjoy the rest of my day watching The Walking Dead with Scott in bed while I hand sew. Anybody have any questions before I get off of here on my little tiny cute blocks? Again, they are 16 half square triangles and 24 patches to make this layout. I'm going to hold it up right here if you want to take a screenshot of the layout. And I'll take and post a picture of these in the Facebook group. That way you can see the layout. I'll post a picture in the Facebook group because that will be a still picture. And that way you guys can see. And that will make it easier. So if you're not joined that Facebook group, Scott will put a link in and you guys can join that Facebook group. Make sure you answer all four questions to join the Facebook group. If you don't answer, Scotty won't let you in because we're trying to moderate that group. And we got every day spam, spam, spam. So... We're trying to make sure that with just regular real people. And if you answer the questions, we know you're regular and real. <laughs> so, all right, guys. I don't see any. All right. Yep. Yes, it's going to be adorable. It's a nice, nice little pattern. And with them next to each other, oh, I can just see it now. It's going to be so cool. I hope I get nine. Nine will be the perfect because then I can have three across by three down. That'll be perfect. And that will give me enough half square triangles to go all the way around with it. Ooh, that's going to be so awesome. All righty. Anything else? Okay. All right, guys. Have a good night. Thank you for hanging out. And I will see you guys Wednesday for Sculliver. And that's week 19's video, I think. And then... Uh, I'll see you again next Sunday for an actual live stream unless there's mail between now and then or something, you know, to show you guys. But right now I'm kind of on the slow. So I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Good night.